Hello, this is Eric Bobro. In this ArchiCAD video tutorial, I'll show you how you can create your own custom 2D symbols or 3D library parts, and how you can optimize and fine-tune them so they have selection handles that make it easy to precisely place them into your model, how you can add intelligent controls for, let's say, text, so you can have text with the symbol that changes as you need it each time you place it, and even the size of the text can be adjusted, and how you can take any combination of 2D and 3D elements and create a compound object, a new one, that will have all the information you need for placing it into a schedule, an appliance or equipment schedule, has all the listing parameters uh, just like the standard library parts. We'll be going through a little bit of GDL editing, but I promise you it will be very easy to follow and you'll be able to get a lot of mileage or a lot of uh, value out of some very simple modifications that I'll show you. Ready to get started? Let's go. So let me just draw a box of walls here that will give us some context and zoom in on a corner like this. I'm going to create a 2D symbol first. I'll just use the, the line tool and just draw a simple line here. Then I'll go and create an arc. Now I have something that is a symbol. Let's make it a little bit more complicated by putting in some text. So I'll just click where I want to put the text in, click twice, and then type some letters. Now I'd like to center this text, so I'm going to drag this. And when I drag it, I'll move it horizontally, hold down the Shift key to lock it, and then snap that center point in line. So now it's nicely centered. Now, if I were to add more text to this, like this, it's obviously losing its centered attribute. So let me undo that and show you how you can maintain the text even when you change how much text there is. We can go and make the text centered from one line to the next and anchored by the center midpoint here. Now, having done that, if I were to put in some more text, you can see how it is staying centered right over the point that I uh, placed it. So let me just drag this up a little bit so we have it nicely placed within the symbol that I'm creating. I'm going to go to the arrow tool and just select all of these elements here. This is the line, the arc, and the text element. Go to the File menu, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as Object. Now in earlier versions of ARCHICAD, um, it may uh, say Save Selection as Object, and then later you choose Object, Door, or Window. In more recent versions, it asks you right away what you want to save it as. So I'll save it as an object, and I'll call this um, New Symbol here, and it'll go into the embedded library within the project, or I could save it out onto the hard drive in a folder. So I'll just say Save This. Having done that, it then says, do you want to customize the pens? I'll just leave these alone. This would allow us to change the pens later. This is a new feature in um, ARCHICAD 16, or maybe it started in 15, which uh, gives us some more options, but we don't need to look at that now. Having done that, I'm going to go to the Object tool and simply click, and you can see that it's placed an element next to the original one, but it's a single element. You can see that it's got a set of hotspots. It's an object. When I open it up, you can see it says New Symbol, and here's what it looks like. Let me just close up some of the panels here so you can see everything. Now, I'm going to show you how you can create a 3D element just like this. I'll go to the Wall tool, and instead of drawing um, a box of walls, I'll just draw a sing single wall, and I'm going to make this just sort of as a backing. Uh, I'm going to make a, a little object that's sort of as a stand that you could attach to a wall. So I'll make this very short, say one foot, that would be about 300 millimeters, and only an inch thick. And I'll just lock the materials, let's say for all of them, to something like a paint color, say paint 14 here. And now I'll go and draw this piece of wall. I'll make it just a short little piece here. 
so this is uh, just a, a simple little piece that I'm now going to attach or at model something in front of. I'm going to use the slab tool. And in this case, I want to take it up above the zero. So I'm taking it from zero to one. And again, I'm going to go lock it, so it's all one material. And let's take this as a um, different material here. And then I will draw um, a rectangular box. And uh, let's say that I wanted it to make it uh, one foot long by eight inches here. So now I've got a little combination of two elements. If I look at these in 3D, if I actually, if I just bring up the 3D window, we'll see those elements right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and save these the same way I did before. I'll just select them on the plan. And you notice that there are two items selected. The wall actually has its reference line along the edge of the slab. But I'm going to go to the File menu, Libraries and Objects, Save ob Selection as Object, and let's just call this um, Wall Stand. And now you notice that it's bringing up that similar dialog, which was introduced, as I said, in either 16 or ARCHICAD 15. And I can say that, you know, the material for the blue, I think that was the um, base material, and the material for the back is this one. Now, by typing this in, when I'm working with the object later, I will be able to see which um, these refer to, and I could change the materials. Let me just say OK. And now, having done that, go to the Object tool, and I can place it. So that works nicely. If I go to 3D, we're going to see that now I have the two near each other. This one being uh, a single object and this one being a set of two elements, wall and slab. Now let's say that I wanted to refine this. So I'm going to go here and let's say fill at the corners, make it curved. So now we have a shape that's a little bit different. I'll go here, select these two elements, repeat the exercise, save it as an object, and I could either save it as a new object or if I type in carefully the same name, then it'll ask me if I want to replace it. When I say replace, and of course I may now have to repeat this. Um, this was uh, base material and back material here. But you'll also see that that after I refresh the screen, zoom in or out, that the object here has updated. So in other words, I overwrote the original one, um, and any instances that were placed are already uh, have already been updated. Now you notice that the hotspots remained square here, and in fact, on the original object like this, they are square. And uh, perhaps we want to have a hotspot in the center point here and we don't want to have these hotspots sort of hanging out in space. Let me show you how we can edit this object to make it a little bit smarter. So I'll go to the File menu with this object selected, go to Libraries and Objects, and Open Object. So Open Object, if I have nothing selected, it will allow me to browse for one within the library. If I have one element selected, it will open it directly. Having opened it, it brings up the dialog box here, now what we're going to um, see is that uh, there are a lot of different buttons, places that you can click on. If I go down to 2D here, we'll see that text that says the ABC123. Let me just change that here. Remember, that's what I had typed in before. X y, I'll just change it to XYZ and say Save. And I just did Command S or Control S. And you can see how the object has updated. Now let me go back and open that or look at the object again. It's available under the window menu and you can see the name of the object, new symbol, that'll bring this right back up. But let's take a look at the section called details. Now in earlier versions of ARCHICAD it may be you might see parameters and then at the top something that says something about details. Um, in more recent versions there's a separate little button here. Now when I'm in the details there are different things I can change. The one I'm going to look at right now is called compatibility options and we can see that there's an option here to put hotspots on the bounding box. That's what's giving those um, hotspot 
the you know those ones out in space. Now I'm going to cancel this here, and I'm going to close the object because I'd like to overwrite the object with hotspots that I carefully placed myself. So I'll just save it and then close it here. Now having done that, uh, what I'll do is go to the hotspot tools. This is under the more group of elements, and I'll go to the hotspot tool. The um, a hotspot, as you probably know, if I click anywhere, it puts a little X, and when I hover over it, I get a check mark, just like I get a check mark at the corner of things. Now I'm going to undo that, and I'll place the first one where I would like to be able to insert this object. It could be any point I wish, but perhaps I want to put it in by this center bottom point as the primary one. Now I'll also click on the other ones that I think are useful here, and perhaps where the center of the text is. Now having done that, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these elements again, and go to the File menu, Libraries and Objects, and we'll say Save Selection as Object. Now if I wanted to, I could overwrite um, the uh, one that I had before, but let's just create it as a, a second one here. And I'll just leave this alone. I don't need to worry about the pens um, setting here. And I'll go back to the Object Tool. And the Object Tool has already been set up to place this new object. So I'll just click and place it. And you can see now, when I select it, that there's hot spots in, let me just move over a little bit, um, on these extra points. In fact, let me just drag this down a little bit to get it clear. And if I compare that to the original object, which only had the four bounding box ones in the center, this new one has some additional hotspots here at this center point, the top here, and another one for the text. Now let me go and open up this object. There is a shortcut for doing it. If I go to the File menu, Libraries and Objects, Open Object, there is a shortcut. On Mac it's Command Option O. On Windows I believe it would be Shift Control O, but you can look and figure that out yourself. It might be Alt Control O, one of those. Now if I use that keyboard shortcut, it opens it up, and let's go to the compatibility options and turn off the hotspots on the bounding box and say OK, and then save that. By the way, save here is saving this object, not the whole plan, just what's the current frontmost window. Now when I go back to the floor plan, you can see that the change has taken place. Now remember that this text was what I had saved it as here, and I had manually changed it in this one to just a different fixed text. So you can make the text whatever you want before you create it or afterward. But what if you want to put it in sometimes with one text, sometimes with another, or just make it totally parametric? Well, let's open it up. I've got the object selected, Command Option O, or con Shift Control O. And let's take a look at the um, uh, 2D script. And what you'll see is that there is some text in the middle of it that is got the ABC123 in quotes. So that's what's causing it to uh, have that text. I'm going to replace it with a parameter. So I'll go to the parameters section of the library part and create a new parameter. So when I create a new parameter, it gets added to the list, and I'll just give it a variable name. Now this is a name, let's just call it um, uh, text contents. Now you can't have any spaces in it. It has to be all connected. Um, and we have a type. The type in this case is going to be text. So I use this uh, little pop-up for the type and choose the ABC, which indicates text. And then whatever is shown here is going to be seen when you are opening up the object, the object settings when you place it. So let's just say uh, text contents. This is this can be multiple words. It's really for you as a human being or a designer when you're placing it. Now what's the initial value? Let me just um, put one, two, three, four, five. So whatever I put in here will be the default when we switch to that object. So we probably would want to pick something that would be useful, but I'll just demonstrate this contents here. Having done that, this parameter is now available, and if I switch to the 2D script, I could replace the text here, including the quotes, with text contents. So basically that same word that I used in the parameters here. You know, I could even copy this um, here and go and let's just delete it 
and just paste. And you see I can actually paste it in. So it's just done a line by itself. And when I hit Save here, so I just did Command S and I go back to this, you can see this is switched to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But unlike before, now under the parameters, I can switch this to any text. So let's say A, B, C, D, E. And you can see how that switches up above here. And when I click OK, it'll switch on the plan. So now we can actually have text that can vary. You know, put it in once with one text, put it in another time with other text. This concludes the first section of my three-part ARCHICAD video training on creating custom library parts. In the next section, we'll look at how you can make these 2D symbols smarter so that the text can be adjusted in terms of its size parametrically, as well as having more than one line of text. In the final section, we'll combine 2D and 3D components in a more complex way and create compound elements, then make them smart enough to pick up the object ID from the info box as the text on the floor plan, and also change their subtype so that they have all the listing parameters necessary to fit into standard interactive schedules, such as an appliance or equipment schedule. This has been Eric Bobro. Please add your comments and questions to the page down below. If you like this video, please click the like button or add a comment and let me know what you thought. I look forward to reading your feedback. Thanks for watching.